Hi, everyone. Hey, guys. <laughs> Welcome to our first episode of the new decade. Of 2020. Woohoo. New it's year, new decade. New Here you, new me, new us. <laughs> Just kidding, new we're books. the same, pretty much. But yeah, new books. That's like the most important part, yeah, right? For sure. <laughs> In our last video, we talked about some books that we're really excited about for 2020. Um, so Clap When You Land. Love Boat Taipei. Mm -hmm. Felix Ever After. And Black Flamingo. Black Flamingo, yeah. Um, so you can check that out in this yeah. list here. Um, but there's just so many more that we couldn't fit into the video. So, so we many. decided, why not? Why not do another video about books we're excited for in the coming year? Mm -hmm. So. And this is not even all of them, so no. any books that you guys are excited about, definitely let us know in the comments. Please. We really read all of your comments and love them and love you guys and your support. Um, so thanks so much again for supporting our video series. Yeah. So let's just get into the books. Yeah. 2020 books. 2020. All right. Do you want to um, start? Yeah, sure. So one book that I'm really excited about um, that comes out in March is We Are, T we are Totally Normal, um, which is such a good title in yeah. itself. Um, I love it. I mean, I feel like we all tend to think that we're weird sometimes, <laughs> and that's what makes us normal. Um, but yeah, this book, it's about um, two friends, two male friends who... Um, they end up having a romantic relationship, mm. and one of the main characters is just thinking, you know, wanting to erase it all um, to be quote unquote normal again. Um, so it's it's a high school junior. Um, this is perfect for fans of anyone who loves Aristotle and Dante, oh, which I know you do. Who doesn't love that? I do. Um, it's oh, one man. of the best books. And um, for Odd One Out, Nick Stone. Mm. Um, and it's just, it's so funny and it's savvy and it's just, the. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited to read this one. The cover's so nice too. Yeah. I love it. I know. I love the colors on the cover. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. Cool. That's I'm excited to read that. Yeah. Um, one of my most anticipated 2020 books actually has two formats. So this Ooh. is the paperback, and then this is the hardcover. I'm going to look at the paperback. Yeah. Um, this is actually, okay, so it's Almost American Girl by Robin Ha. And this is a memoir, graphic novel, as you can see here. It's so pretty. Which is so cool. I feel like I want to read more graphic novels, mm -hmm. and there's just so many choices that are coming out, and um, they're just so cool. So this I one know. is about this girl who is living in Korea, and a uh, true story, by the way, because it's a memoir, um, and she thinks she's just going on vacation to Alabama with her mom, and it ends up turning out to be a permanent trip. So her mom doesn't tell her. She's just like, yeah, we're going to go to Alabama. And suddenly her mom is getting married. She has to get adjusted to a new country, new family, new school, new language. So she is totally fish out of water uh, mm -hmm. for, you know, good reason. And then the, the thing that really helps her find solace is when she enrolls in a comic book drawing class. Oh. So... I like how that's kind of meta because this is yeah, a comic it makes book. Perfect sense. <laughs> I love to it. Be a graphic novel. Yeah, so it really this book is about how art can truly just change someone's life, even save someone's life, and um, just almost American Girl is just about immigration and about growing up and you know all the things. And it's it was really good to read, so you guys should check it out. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you have any graphic novel recommendations, please let us know because it is something that I like love reading, and I can never find any that I like. I don't know. I just need good recommendations. Yeah. <laughs> so there is one we wanted to talk about. We don't have a copy, but you can show the image. Mm -hmm. um, the fire never goes out by Noelle Stevenson. Yes. So we're really excited about that one. That's a graphic novel memoir, and mm -hmm. that's about mental uh, health and all the highs and lows of mental health and really important book. Yeah, so it's going to be really good. Yeah. So that one comes out in March. So look for that. Um, the next one I want to talk about is Just a Boy and a Girl in a Little Canoe. Oh, what um, could happen? <laughs> I know. Um, so I don't, Sarah Milanowski is just like an incredible storyteller and they're just so fun and so like you know like rom com mm -hmm. um this looks like a perfect summer read right I'm just yeah. like sitting on and a lake or something it's set at summer camp oh so well that works is. <laughs> um, so the main character is a counselor at summer camp and she starts to fall for another counselor at summer <gasps> oh, camp man. which i feel like growing up 
some of my first crushes probably were at summer camp. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then, so she actually has a boyfriend who Ooh. is traveling Europe. So it's kind of like this, you know, finding yourself, do I want to be with this boyfriend mm. or do I want to be with my new summer fling? So check this one out. Um, it comes out in May. So Nice. Yeah. My next book is coming out in June, and I'm so excited for this one. It's called I'll Be the One by Lila Lee. And this cover just makes me happy because it's just so happy. Yeah. It's like this girl is just having a ball. She's having a great time. <laughs> There's rainbows. You know, it's great. Um, so this book is about Sky Shin, who basically wants to be a K-pop star, but she's been told I mean, her... who doesn't? I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the first thing that I think about when I think of this book is like K-pop, uh, body positivity mm -hmm. and bi rep, like bisexuality representation, mm -hmm. and those three things just kind of draw me in. Like, yeah. I don't really need that much more to yeah. be encouraged to read this book. I mean, some like American <laughs> Idol, some like yeah. the voice dusted in. It's like a. It's gonna yeah, be just I'll let you talk entertaining. About it, but. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> so, it's gonna be all those things that you just heard. Uh, and basically, she's been told her whole life that fat girls can't dance and they can't do things, they can't like wear certain clothing, which is wrong, as mm -hmm. we know. So Sky wants to take it all back and show the world that she can do these things. And what better way than to enter a K-pop competition? And of course, there has to be a romance with one of her competitors. Of course. And that's gonna be a fun ride. You know that that will just be full of, you know, all the drama, yeah. and I can't wait to read it. So definitely check this book out. And again, just the cover, just the cover. It's so great. It's so great. Yeah, it like reminds me of back in the day, those like American Idol like relationship rumors. <laughs> oh my yeah. God, I feel like every season there was like a new relationship rumor. But um, so I want to talk about the state of us. So we all know 2020 is a very important year in politics. Yes. Um, if you can vote, yes, go vote. Yes, vote. And if you are about to turn 18, register to vote. It's really important. Um, so this book. It's about what would happen if um, two presidential candidates, mm -hmm. if their kids formed a relationship with each other. Ooh. So these, like, like a Democrat and a Republican Talk rival. Talk about drama. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and just the way that this is done is just, like, so smart. Um, so it's a relationship between um, the Democrat and Republican sons. Um, and then, like, a third-party candidate wants to out these two oh. guys um, and kind of use this to, like, you know, propel themselves up and over these other two presidential candidates. So it's like... That just sounds so juicy. I know, I know. I it's like know what secrets happens. and yeah. <laughs> romance. And, um, yeah, this one's great. So go check this one out. It comes out in June, so... Nice. Yeah. All right, the next book I have is Gimme Everything You Got. I always want to say Gimme All You Got. Gimme mm. Everything You Got, <laughs> which is a great title, um, by Ivor Marie Palmer. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen this cover. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, this actually is not the final cover, but the final cover, will, I'm sure, will be amazing. Mm -hmm. So this book just is so much fun. That's like the main word that I want to describe it with. Um, basically, it's 1979, which weirdly is like kind of historical fiction now, mm -hmm. which is not that yeah, long ago, I but know. It's, it's weirdly, crazy and okay. <laughs> so this is kind of like 70s nostalgia, you know, mm -hmm. the era of like rollerblading. Yes, um, like, even though, did that era ever end? No. no. But anyway, <laughs> um, so this is about 1979 when Title IX just passes, and that allows women to start having their own sports teams, among many other things. So the main character, Susan, is, she ha isn't really interested in soccer until she learns who the coach is gonna be. And the coach is this guy named Bobby McMahon, who is just foxy. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love that word. <laughs> he's foxy and charming, and he really is the catalyst to, you know, her wanting to join. So that's how it starts. So her and a bunch of other girls, they might also have similar intentions. Romantic yes. feelings. <laughs> but as they kind of join this soccer team for the first time, they start to bond with each other. And really, all the magic of bonding over sports and stuff mm -hmm. like that comes in. And it's just like a really great read. It's very feminist. It's very, uh, and I just want to say, it's always appropriate, you know? Yeah, so, which is important. Very important. Uh, 
and it's just it's just such a great read. It's such a fun read and really an interesting take on, you know, this very important thing that we now consider normal. You know that women are parts of their own sports teams and among other things. So it's really fun. You should definitely check it out. The next one I want to talk about, which is also about high school sports, is uh, The Easy Part of Impossible. So this one's about high school swimming and diving, which I was a part of. Nice. Um, so it's like a little bit nostalgia. Mm -hmm. um, but this one, as opposed to Give Me Everything You Got, this um, deals with a lot of serious topics. So, um, you know, the coach is very abusive of his power um, mm. on this girl's swimming and diving team. Um, and then uh, one of the main characters is dealing with ADHD, um, also is falling for um, a boy on the autism spectrum. So there's a lot of heavy issues in this one, mm -hmm. um, but it's just such a great read. Um, and it's, it's everything that like we should be talking about. It's these very important topics mm -hmm. that um, I feel like you don't see a lot of. So yeah. definitely, um, definitely get your hands on this one. It comes out in April. Nice. Yeah. Another cool cover. Yeah, I love that cover. Uh, so the next book I want to talk about is by an author Hello. you may have heard of. Uh, this is Rules for Being a Girl by Candace Bushnell, author of Sex and the City, mm -hmm. and Katie Kutugno. So everyone knows the rules for being a girl because there are many. And uh, this book really is another, you know, take back all of those rules and make our own rules kind of thing. So the main character in this book is Marin, and she's a star student. Uh, she's editor at the school newspaper, and she has a crush on her English teacher named okay. Mr. Beckett. And that is kind of normal, you know. I remember, like, having some crushes on high school teachers. Yeah. <laughs> but um, they are supposed to stay just crushes, yeah. you know. And so then this book delves into the more serious issue when a teacher responds inappropriately. So this is a um, very relevant read. Uh, and it's it's really just goes into all of the rules for being a girl, uh, and I can't wait to read it. I haven't. I'm excited. Yeah. Newsflash that um, we are so excited for these books coming out. We haven't read some of them, so that's why we wanted to talk about them and why we're excited about yeah. them. Yeah. 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 For sure. Um, okay. So <laughs> I feel there's so like, many books. Yeah. I feel <laughs> we're just like steamrolling. I <laughs> I talked about a lot of, you know, kind of fluffier topics mm -hmm. at the beginning mm -hmm. um, and moved my way into oh, no. these heavier topics. <laughs> so with the last one, very heavy topic. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to talk about this one called The Lightness of Hand. Um, so this is Jeff Garvin, who is also the author of Symptoms of Being Human. Mm -hmm. um, and this one deals with uh, bipolar 2. Um, so it's about a girl and her dad, and um, the dad is a musician. Um, mu <laughs> the dad is not a oh, musician. Oh, he's a magician. <laughs> he's a magician. Um, <laughs> You're almost there. <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> yeah, he's a magician. Um, and one of his stunts goes really wrong on live TV, which, Ooh. like, I remember watching, like, David Blaine and yeah. those people that I was like, or like David Copperfield too. Wait, is that, was he on TV? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> is Chris. Is it David Copperfield? He's like very old. I don't think he was I on TV. I think that's like a Charles Dickens I think novel. It is. I think, okay, so I think it's David, David Blaine, Blaine. <laughs> and there's like, a, oh, Chris Angel. Okay. Chris Angel's the other one. Okay. And they used to like do these crazy stunts. I don't know if they still do, but I would yeah. be like, what if this went terribly wrong? So this book, A Stunt Goes Terribly Wrong. Oh no. Um, the... The girl and her dad are forced to, you know, take a road trip, go do these, like, little gigs and stuff. They end up running out of money, oh. and she can't afford her bipolar 2 medication. So it's it's kind of like, how far will she go to be able to afford mm. to take care of herself? Yeah. Which I think is, like, such an important topic that we, like, need to talk about. Mm. Um, and, yeah, it's just, like, about not having insurance and not being able to essentially afford what you need. So wow, it's yeah. really important. That does sound like a important yeah. read. And this one comes out in April too, so. A lot of April books. I know. Okay, the next two books I'm gonna talk about deal with toxic masculinity, and I'm happy that they're both coming out this year mm -hmm. and that this topic is finally getting a little more coverage, and especially, you know, it's fun to read it in fiction because I feel like that's one of the powers of fiction. They just, you know, you can address topics, but then 
not have it be so personal, but then it's still relevant, you yeah. know? So this topic, uh, sorry, this book is called The New David Espinoza. It's by Fred Aceves. He also wrote The Closest I've Come. So this delves into the dark world of bodybuilding. Oh. Uh, basically, the main character gets bullied, um, and he gets in a physical altercation, and he's just fed up with it. You know, he's tired of being picked on because he's skinny, so he vows that over the summer he's going to bulk up and become a real man, um, oh and God. he thinks that to do that he needs to get super, you know, ripped or, mm. you know, build all his muscles, and then he, he goes further and goes into bodybuilding, um, which can be okay if you do it responsibly, but this main character starts to not know where the line is between obsession and just, you know, a healthy hobby. So uh, basically he starts neglecting his family, his friends, and he has to reckon with, you know, what, what stakes is too far, how far am I willing to go, and is this even what I have to do to be a real man? So um, wow. really great read and an important topic. Yeah. I feel like you don't really see a lot of books like that. Yeah, and also I think the author has a personal connection to this uh, bodybuilding world, so you know, it's well researched and everything, and I agree. I think it's it's cool when authors can go into a specific topic and like mm -hmm. really delve into it. And yeah, this is like not as common to read, you know. Yeah. I feel so. Thank you for reading this. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so th the next book I want to talk about is "If These Wings Could Fly." Um, so this book comes out in March, and it's about. Um, it's also a heavier topic, so it's about domestic violence, um, the bonds of sisterhood, um, first love. So it has like, it brushes a on a lot things, of different topics. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of just, you know, um, it's sprinkled with some mag magic realism. Mm -hmm. um, it's perfect for fans of like Mindy McGinnis and uh, Laura Ruby and Lori Hulse Anderson. Oh, um, those are good comps. Just, yeah, yeah, so I, I am like in the middle of reading this one. I'm really, really liking it. Yeah. It's just, it's great. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. It's I so wonder good. if the magical realism ties into the birds or into the wings. I it, guess I'll have to read know, it to find out. It might. It <laughs> might. <laughs> All right. And the last book I have to talk about today is. Not So Pure and Simple by Lamar Giles. Mm -hmm. So another book confronting tox toxic masculinity, and this is done in a really fresh and funny way, you know? I feel like that can be hard to pull off on a topic that you want to be serious about, but his writing is just very charming and funny and like easy to read. So this book follows Del, uh, who is trying to be the nice guy to get the girl, and uh, Lamar Giles goes into, you know, is that the right course of action? Uh, so basically, he's had a crush on this girl forever, but she's always had a boyfriend. So then finally, she doesn't have a boyfriend, and he's ready to make his move and move in there. Um, <laughs> and he accidentally signs himself up for a purity pledge, which like oh. no one thought he was going to do, especially him. But he sticks to it because he wants to get the girl. But as he you know, goes through the book, um, he kind of has to examine, okay, what does she actually want? Or am I just thinking about myself, you know? Mm -hmm. And what does it mean to play into this nice guy trope? Um, is that the right way to do things? So it's really interesting and, uh, again, like a really important topic to explore, especially through fiction, so definitely recommend this book. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, yeah. the cover itself yeah, is like so I know. striking it's so that strong. I'm like... I, I just, I love it. All those colors together, they just work. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, I feel like we talked about so many books. I know, I, it was just like a one of those kind of speed rounds. You I know? love <laughs> it, I love it. I like need to read everything on yours. Yeah, you um, too. But yeah, I just want to take the rest of the day to just read, yeah. so maybe I will. I don't know. <laughs> we're just going to leave early and just, this is the rest of the thing we're going to do today. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys, Thank as you. always. Um, and we'll see you next episode. Yeah, bye. bye.